Men's National Basketball Championship with the call of the game. Here's Matt Boss. Thank you, Scott. Dort College, the number 10 seed with a 28 and 6 overall record, earned an automatic berth into this tournament uh, via the GPAC Tournament Championship, third overall appearance at the championship and a second straight trip to the quarterfinal, third overall appearance back in 88 when it was just one tournament. Uh, they also qualified and made it to the quarterfinal. Head coach Ross Dahman, his fourth season uh, with the defenders, Dort College, uh, the GPAC runner up. They finished 15 and five in the conference. They have won nine straight games heading into this one. And like I said, they knocked off Northwestern the first round and then defeated Indiana Wesleyan, the number seven seed, 75 to 62. Cardinal Stritch, the number two seed overall in the Wolves. Head coach Drew Diener in his fourth season. Cardinal Stritch making their 10th uh, overall appearance. They have won 12 straight heading in. They're 32 and three. They ended the year ranked second in the nation. Third, uh, they finished the year number two, uh, three straight weeks. And uh, last year, like the defenders, they lost in the quarterfinal round. Both of these teams have never been past this point, and this should be an outstanding matchup. Again, the 2-10 matchup, Cardinal Stritch, the number two seed, 32-3, and three, number 10, Dort. They are 28-6 and six overall. Let's go over the starting lineup, first of all, for the defenders and head coach Ross Dalma, a senior-laden team uh, in the backcourt. 5'11 senior from Altoona, Iowa, Cliff Warner, 6'4 junior from Warren City, Iowa, Austin Kachi, 6'4 senior from Sioux Center, Trevor Waltersdorf, 6'7", junior, Kyle Lindbergh. He's from Margate, Florida, and 6'7", sen uh, senior from Rock Valley, Jordan. Vogel, Cardinal Stritch, and the Wolves. Head coach Drew Diener in his fourth season. Their starting lineup looks like this. Tony Smith, 5'11", sophomore from Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. Derek Semenez, 6'3", junior from Rosendale, Wisconsin. Jeremy D'Amico, 6'6", senior from Geneva, Illinois. Nick Ford, a 5'9", senior from Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. And Darren Moore is the big fella in the middle, a 6'7", senior from Chicago, Illinois. Cardinal Stritch uh, lost its two of its top three scores from a year ago, but uh, they do return uh, three starters and seven players, and they also get gained Darren Moore, a transfer from Wayne State College of Nebraska. Dort College returns virtually everyone from their team that went 30-5 and five last year and lost in the quarterfinals to McPherson. Cardinal Stritch lost in the quarterfinals to Davenport again. Neither one of these teams has made it past this point. And uh, almost a capacity crowd here. A great crowd on hand, and the Dort College defenders will be in the home white. Cardinal Stritch and the Wolves will be in the darker uniforms. Again, the starting lineup, Warner, Kachi, Walterstorf, Lindbergh, Jordan Vogel. Cardinal Stritch will have Smith, Semenez, D'Amico, Ford, and more. Tail of the tape, Dort College averaging 81 points per game. Cardinal Stritch at 75%. Both of these teams shoot the ball real well, 51% for Dort and 48% for Cardinal Stritch. Both of these teams rebound well, both in the top 10 in the nation in rebounding. The leading scorer is Nick Semenez, Derek Semenez, 16 and a half points per game, and Trevor Walterstorf among five defender players in double figures. He averages 15 points per game, followed closely behind by Cliff Warner. It's the defenders who control the opening tap, and we are underway in this second quarterfinal contest again. William Penn, the top seed, knocked off Midland by one on a buzzer beater, 67-66. Electric atmosphere here this afternoon. And point look at Dort College turns it over on their first possession. Here comes Cardinal Stritch. They'll throw it ahead to Tony Smith, and Smith puts the Wolves on the board first. And it's 2-0 in favor of Cardinal Stritch. Lindbergh with the basketball. Left side to Walterstorf. Walterstorf gets into the paint, puts it up, and a charge on Trevor Walterstorf as the big fella, Darren Moore, 6'7", senior. Holding his ground, takes the charge. And that is the second turnover on the defenders to start the game. Dort College will show token full court pressure as Austin Kachi will provide pressure against Nick Ford, 5'9", senior from Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. 2-0, Cardinal Stritch, Ford across the timeline, Ford. Up top it goes to Smith. Smith, now to D'Amico, D'Amico to Ford. Ford, right side to Smith. Smith looking down low to Moore, he's double teamed, and he stepped on the end line, may have traveled as well. Take your pick, it'll be a turnover on Cardinal Stritch. So Dort College will have the basketball, their third possession, 2-0 Cardinal Stritch in this second quarterfinal matchup. The winner advances to Monday's semifinal. They will play at 8 p.m. on Monday. Kyle Lindbergh with the basketball. Lindbergh kicks it out to Cliff Warner. Warner and Walterstorff returning All-Americans for the defenders. Kachi throws it down low. Vogel, weak side pass to Lindbergh up for two. Nice find by Jordan Vogel and Kyle Lindbergh ties the game at two. 
It'll be Cardinal, Cardinal Stretch basketball. Cardinal Stretch on a 12-game win streak coming in. Fort College has won nine straight coming into this one. Up top it goes to Smith. Smith with the basketball, guarded by Walter Storff. Right side to Ford. Ford, cross court to Semenis. Semenis up top to Ford. Ford, guarded by Cliff Warner. 14 seconds to shoot. Ford into the paint against Warner. Warner swats it away. Ford gets it back. Ford into the lane. Turnaround jumper. Good. Good persistent there by Nick Ford to stay with it after Warner nearly stole it. It's 4-2 in favor of Cardinal Stritch. Defenders win the basketball. Lindbergh right side to Kachi. Kachi, one of the tournament leaders with three-pointers. He's got six threes in the two games. And uh, they will closely guard him as he's got it at the top of the key. Lindbergh fakes the three. Now pulls up from 17. Shot too strong, no good. Rebounded by Moore for Cardinal Stritch. Across the timeline it goes to Ford. Ford to Semenes. Semenes baseline. And he looked down low to Moore, and it's stolen away by Trevor Walterstorff. Second turnover on Cardinal Stritch. Warner across the timeline. Warner hesitates, gets it to Lindbergh. Warner gets it back over to Kachi. Kachi with the basketball. Down low, Lindbergh. He's got position, puts it up and in. Kachi the assist. Lindbergh has got all four points for Dort College, and that ties it at four. Head coach Drew Diener shouting out orders for the Cardinal Stritch Wolves. Both of these guys in their fourth seasons. As head coach, Ross Dalma at Dort and Diener for Cardinal Stritch. Turnaround jumper no good. Tipped up and in by Ford. Ford, one of the smaller guys on the floor, gets the tip in. And it's 6-4 to four in favor of Cardinal Stritch. Lindbergh with the basketball. Kachi. Kachi up top to Walterstorff. They'll reverse it to Warner. Warner to Lindbergh. Lindbergh to Kachi. Kachi will reset the defender offense. Kachi with it at the top of the key. Kachi. Onto the baseline to Lindbergh, looking inside for Vogel. Tipped away, recovered by Kachi with 10 seconds to shoot. Kachi's going to get a screen. Kachi down the right side. Fadeaway jumper is short, no good. And the rebound tipped up by Semenes, and he will bring it up. Semenes gets it back. He'll fire for three. Off the mark, no good. Vogel with the rebound for the defenders. Vogel with the rebound. Warner brings the basketball up. His pass stolen away by Semenes. Semenes with the steal. Puts it up. No good. And an over the back call on Nick Ford. Cliff Warner had position. Ford goes over the back. First team foul on Cardinal Stritch. The defenders a little sloppy with the basketball early. And they will send in a couple of subs. Chris Seaver, 6'8 senior from Huxley, Iowa. Nathan Rindells. 6'1 freshman from Boulder, Colorado, and Sean Kaiser, 6'3 senior from Sioux Center. Kaiser had a big uh, second round game. He was in double figures. Rindell's down low to Seavers. Seavers back to the basket. He'll put it up. Foul on Darren Moore. Chris Seavers will go to the free throw line for two shots. That is a lot of size down low for either team. Moore at 6'7, about 275. Seavers 6'8, and he's got uh, some size to him as well. Chris Seavers will step to the free throw line. Seavers, one of four defender play, current players who has scored 1,000 points, joining Walter Storff and Warner and Vogel and Seavers. He had four points in the second round win and got over 1,000 points in that win over Indiana Wesleyan. Seavers missed the first free throw. And the second one is good. One of two free throws for Chris Sievers. It's 6-5 to five in favor of Cardinal Stritch. They will have the basketball. Walking it up will be Nick Ford. It's Ford and D'Amico. Checking in was Isaac Quinn, a 6'8 freshman from Kenosha, Wisconsin. He comes in for more. Up top it goes to Quinn. Quinn had a nice second round uh, game. And an entry pass blocked by Kaiser. And Nathan Rindell swallows up the rebound. Here come the defenders. Rindells will slow it up. Rindell's right side to Kachi. Nice play by Kaiser on the defensive end. Seavers with position, puts it up, count it, and one. Foul on Isaac Quinn. Chris Seavers will go to the line to try to convert the three-point play. Cliff Warner will come back into the line at four Rindell's. And Seavers back to the free throw line. That is the first lead for the Dort College defenders coming at the 15-39 mark. Seavers to try to convert the three-point play and does. Seavers with a three-point play. It's eight to six defenders, their first lead of the game. Seavers off the bench already with four points. 
It'll be Wolves basketball. Cardinal Stretch brings it into the front court. Ford with the basketball. Ford up top to Semenes. Semenes, the leading score, over to Ford. Ford gets the screen. Ford down in the lane, throws it up to Quinn. Quinn, tough catch, and he puts it up and in. Isaac Quinn, the 6'8 freshman, ties it at eight with that jumper. Five minutes in, we're tied at eight in this second quarterfinal contest. Walter Storff for the basketball. To Kachi, Kachi to Kaiser. Kaiser on the right wing. Looking inside, four Seavers. He catches it down low, puts it up and in. Boy, Seavers getting position down low. And now a foul, a technical foul has been called on Cardinal Stritch. They're pointing at number 40, Isaac Quinn. And I think they're going to call it on Quinn. That is his second personal foul, technical foul. Austin Kachi will go to the free throw line to shoot the technical. Quinn must have said something. But again, Seavers battling for position. He's catching it uh, right at, right where you want to. Perfect position for a post player. And uh, Cardinal Stritch, it's going to be a long day for the Wolves if they let uh, Vogel and Seavers post up like that. Kachi's free throws up and good. He'll get uh, one more. Again, a technical foul has been issued on Isaac Quinn. That is his second personal foul as well. Kachi's free throw up and good. A 12-8 advantage for the Dort College defenders. And uh, bucket by Chris Seavers and two free throws on the technical foul by Kachi. It's 12-8, and the defenders will get the basketball. Cliff Warner will trigger in. Kyle Lindbergh, Chris Seavers, Sean Kaiser, and Trevor Walterstorff, the other players on the floor. Now they're going to give it to uh, Cardinal Stritch, and that's a rule change. Player gets a technical, they're going to give the ball to back to the other team. So it'll be Nick Ford will bring it up. 12-8 defenders with the basketball. Dort shooting 67%. Cardinal Stritch 50% just early in this contest, however. Left side to Ford. Ford into the paint against Warner. Little floaters up and good. Nice take by Nick Ford. He's got six points. 12-10 in favor of the defenders. Warner across the timeline. Up top to Lindbergh. They're going to give him some room on the three-point line. Kaiser over to Walterstorff. Walterstorff, high post to Lindbergh. Lindbergh, they're going to get clear out for Lindbergh. Kicks it out to Warner. Warner, pull up three, off the mark, no good. Rebounded by Semenes for Cardinal Stritch. Semenes down low, passes it to D'Amico, who missed the shot, but a uh, goaltending call on Chris Severs and the defenders. That's going to tie it at 12 on the basket by Jeremy D'Amico. We're tied at 12 with 14 minutes left to play in this first half. The winner advances to their first ever semifinal. With the basketballs, Walterstorff. Walterstorff to Warner. Warner over to Lindbergh. Lindbergh down low to Seavers. Seavers to Warner. Warner back to Lindbergh. Lindbergh now to Warner. Warner down low to Seavers. And he tried to get it to Lindbergh. Cut into the basket. Poked away by Cardinal Stritch. And here come the Wolves. Wolves. In transition, Cliff Warner comes away with a steal. Warner leading the three-on-two break. Warner right side to Walterstorff. Back to Warner, to Lindbergh, top of the key. Kicks it out to Walterstorff, 15-footer off the mark. Seavers battling for the rebound, can't convert. And the rebound controlled by Derek Semenez. Semenez with the rebound, gives it up to Nick Ford. Ford guarded by Cliff Warner. We're tied at 12, 13-30 left to go. Ford with the basketball. He's already got six for Cardinal Stritch. Ford gives it up top to D'Amico. D'Amico to Smith, not a Ford. Easy layup, good. Nick Ford with eight points early on. Ford coming in, averaging just five and a half. It's 14 to 12. Cardinal Stritch on a 6 nothing run to take a two-point lead. Warner dumps it down low to Seavers. Seavers with position, puts it up, and a foul again on Isaac Quinn. Quinn whistled for his third personal foul. And again, Seavers just using his size and uh, post-play awareness, so to speak. He's getting the angle down low, letting him catch it way too deep. If you're Cardinal Stretch, Seavers will step to the free throw line for two shots. Third personal on Quinn. The big fella, Darren Moore, the starting post player, transfer from Wayne State, will come back in after the first free throw by Seavers. Seavers, free throw up and no good. Here come the host of substitutions for both teams. Chad Mazur checks in for the first time for Cardinal Stritch. Darren Moore back onto the floor 
for Dort College, Austin Kachi returns in for Trevor Walterstorff. And Tyler Walterstorff makes his first appearance, a 6'5 sophomore from Sioux Center, Trevor's younger brother. One more free throw coming for Chris Severs. Jordan Vogel at the uh, scorer's table, ready to come in if Severs converts this free throw. It is up and through. Severs makes one of two. Jordan Vogel in for Severs. It's 14-13 in favor of Cardinal Stritch. Back and forth we go. Each team has held the lead. Largest lead was a Dort College four-point lead at 12-8. It's a 16 to one, a six to one run now by Cardinal Stritch. Wolves with the basketball up top to Ford. Ford into the paint, going against Vogel. Kick out pass, three ball on the way is off the mark. Lindbergh up high for the rebound, and it'll be Dort College basketball. It was poked away for the time being by Cardinal Stritch. Good close out there by Kyle Lindbergh. That three ball was by Tony Smith. Warner will bring it up for the defenders. 14-13 in favor of Cardinal Stritch. Walterstorf for the basketball. That's Tyler with it. Tyler gets the screen from Vogel. Walterstorf over to Kachi. Kachi, right wing. Looking for Vogel underneath. Over to Lindbergh. Lindbergh to Walterstorf. Walterstorf feeds it down low to Vogel. Vogel, fadeaway jumper. Off the mark, no good. Walterstorf with the rebound for the defenders. And Dort College will get another look. Over to Lindbergh. Lindbergh, down low to Vogel. Picks up the pass. Back to Lindbergh. Over to Warner, Warner into the paint, kick out pass to Kachi. Kachi gets into the lane, fadeaway jumper, can't get it to fall, and Darren Moore with the rebound for Cardinal Stritch. Stritch with a one-point lead in the basketball. Nick Ford with it. Ford guarded by Warner. Ford, right side, up top it goes to Mazur. Mazur, left side, back to Ford. Ford, baseline, gets into the paint. Nowhere to go and nearly stolen. Gets it to Semenez, lobs it to Moore, puts it up and in. Semenez with the assist. Darren Moore with his first basket. 16-13 in favor of Cardinal Stritch. Nearing the halfway point of this first half. Kachi to Lindbergh. Back to Kachi. He'll try a long three. In and out, no good. Moore with the rebound for Cardinal Stritch. Both teams rebounding very well in the early stages. Walking it up will be Nick Ford. He's met by Warner at the top of the key. High post entry to Moore. Moore hands it off to Semenez. Three ball is off the mark, no good. Vogel with the rebound. Vogel with the rebound, passes it ahead to Lindbergh. Lindbergh puts it up, no good. A lot of contact, no call. And the rebound controlled by Moore. And Ford once again will walk it up. Pace of play, slow, methodical. Both of these teams running some half-court sets. In particular, Cardinal Stritch run playing that way. With the basketballs forward, and a foul on Cliff Warner out front. His first. Team second. And back in is Trevor Walterstorff, Sean Kaiser, and Nathan Rindels. Lindbergh, Kachi, and Tyler Walterstorff will get a breather. Nick Ford will check out for the first time. Back in is Tony Smith for Cardinal Stritch. Also on to the floor is Mike Simpson, a 5'6 junior from North Chicago, Illinois. Simpson to trigger in. He's looking weak side. Now gets it to Moore down low. Moore posting up Walterstorff. Moore puts it up and in. Nice move by Darren Moore. And the lead is 18-13 in favor of Cardinal Stritch. This is a 10-1 run by the Wolves. 10-27 to go. Rindells with the basketball over to Kaiser. Kaiser to Rindells. Rindells, down low to Vogel. Vogel finds Rindells. He's got an open three. Got it! Nathan Rindells knocks down the three. Good kick out by Jordan Vogel. Defenders needed a basket, and they got it from the freshman Rindells. A three ball. 18-16, Cardinal stretch. Simpson, high post, it goes to Mazur. Mazur back to Simpson. Simpson into the paint, and he's taken down by Rindells. Foul on Nathan Rindells, his first, team's third. And it'll be thrown in by Cardinal Stritch. Under 10 minutes to go in this first half, 18-16. Cardinal Stritch with the advantage. Again, they were on a 10-1 uh, to 1 run after, before that three-pointer by Rindells. Simpson to trigger in. Nearly a five-second call. Gets it into Moore. Moore back to Simpson. Simpson will set up in the half court. And Simpson out front, picks up his dribble, gives it over to Moore. Moore up top, it goes to Mazur. Mazur may have walked, no call over to Simpson. Simpson 
17 seconds to shoot. And again, Cardinal Stritch perfectly content to slow this game down. Coming in, averaging 75 points per game. Left side to Mazur. Mazur up top to Simpson. Now seven seconds to shoot. Semenes down low to Moore. Moore, double team, puts it up. Blocked by Vogel, but a foul on Dort College. And that'll put Darren Moore to the foul line for two shots. Jordan Vogel whistled for his first personal foul. And Moore at the free throw line for two. Moore a transfer from Wayne State College of Nebraska. And uh, Moore coming over to Cardinal Stretch for his senior season. Moore coming in averaging 15 and a half points per game. Shooting 70% from the line. First free throw is good. He's got five points for Cardinal Stritch. 19-16 in favor of the Wolves. Second free throw on the way for Moore. And this one is short, no good. Rebounded by Jordan Vogel. 19-16 in favor of Cardinal Stritch. Dort College with the basketball. Chance to cut it to one. Warner with it. Warner, top side. Gets it on the baseline to Walterstorf. Walterstorf into the paint. Jumper, good. Trevor Walterstorf with the bucket. It's a one-point Cardinal Stritch lead. Having seen Walterstorf play over the years, that's vintage Walterstorf, the mid-range jumper. He is tough to stop anywhere closer than 17 feet. And a double dribble called. Unforced error there on Chad Mazur and Cardinal Stritch. Their fourth turnover. Chris Sievers comes back into the game for Jordan Vogel. It'll be Dort College basketball and chance to retake the lead, trailing 19-18, under nine minutes to go until the break. Rindells, Kaiser, Seavers, Warner, and Walterstorff on the floor. Warner with a basketball. Down low to Walterstorff. Walterstorff back to Warner. Back to Walterstorff. Walterstorff gets into the paint, and he traveled. No, they're going to call a foul. No, they're going to call an offensive foul on Trevor Walterstorff. Thought they called traveling at first, but uh, an offensive foul on Trevor Walterstorff, and that is his second foul. So Trevor is going to have to come out. I can eke out a few stats with my voice right now. 60% shooting for Cardinal Stretch in the ball game, and you look at that percentage and the fact that Dort is within one speaks well for their ability to stay in the ball game, and now they're going to get a foul, looks like away from the ball. As another foul goes on the defenders here, Dort so far shooting 42, almost 43%, 6 of 14. Only one three in the ball game, that for Dort. As uh, we're here so far in the ball game, 8.24 to go first half. Kyle Lindbergh with his first personal foul, team six. Next one, Stritch will be in the bonus. Right side it goes to Smith. Smith up top to Simpson, back to Smith. Smith looking for Moore down low. Moore with position, puts it up and in. Moore with seven. Going against Chris Sievers there, 21-18 in favor of Stritch. Seen some pretty good post play out of both of these teams in this one. Kaiser with the basketball, squares up, fires for three, just off the mark, no good. Rebounded by Chad Mazur for Cardinal Stritch, and Stritch with eight minutes to go will walk it up. Pace of play slow, both teams running in the half court. Quite often, Mazur with the basketball right side, up top to Smith. Smith going against Lindbergh, over to Simpson. Simpson to Samanez. Samanez down the lane, puts it up, can't get it to fall. Lindbergh there for the rebound. Not a lot of offensive rebounds either by either team. Kaiser into the paint, finds Seavers. Seavers over to Warner. And a foul on Moore as he knocks Seavers to the floor. That'll be Darren Moore's second personal foul. Now Coach Drew Diener's got a decision because he's got his backup post player with three on the bench. Moore just picked up his second with 7.25 left to go in the first half. And one of those fouls that was kind of a bad break because it looked like that the player was already starting to go down, but there was contact as he went down, and that's why they went ahead and called the foul. But, yeah, you get this point of the ball game, 7.25 to go first half. What that also does now, Matt, is put both teams in the bonus for the rest of the half. Warner will throw it in. Up top to Lindbergh. Lindbergh, 17-footer, off the mark, no good. Rebounded by Kachi. Kachi for the defenders with the offensive rebound. Kaiser looking underneath. Down low to Seavers. Seavers working against the ba uh, backup post player, Carl Kraus. Seavers with the turnaround jumper. He's got nine. You know, it'll be interesting to see if they really start penetrating inside now with that uh, shift in the post defense that Cardinal Stritch has had to put on. Kraus, a 6'8 junior, had to come in. He is third string, I guess you would call him. 
Cardinals stretch with the basketball. Simpson up top with it. Guarded by Warner. 17-footer off the mark. No good. Kaiser with the rebound for the defenders. Sean Kaiser with the rebound. Dort has a chance to retake the lead. Lindbergh into the front court. Up top to Warner. Warner, three ball. It's off the mark. No good. And the rebound controlled by Nick Ford. Ford will push it up. Three on two break. Little floater off the mark. Rebounded by Cliff Warner. Warner, the smallest guy out there, corrals uh, the rebound. And it'll be Warner bringing it across the timeline. Warner up top to Lindbergh. Lindbergh, top of the key. And he'll feed it down low to Sievers again. Back to Lindbergh. Kaiser with it. Dort College making a conscious effort getting the ball inside. Warner over to Lindbergh. Lindbergh looking for Sievers. Lindbergh into the paint with 10 seconds to shoot. Up top to Kachi. Kachi looking for Sievers. Has it poked away from behind and stolen. Good play by Nick Ford. Ford. Will throw it back to Simpson and Cardinal Stritch will set up the half-court offense. And a timeout called by Coach Drew Diener for Cardinal Stritch. 21-20, Cardinal Stritch with the lead over Dort College. 5.54 left to go. I almost feel guilty reading this now. Make sure to check out more exciting action of other NAI championships by going to www.nai.org. Division II women's championship going on. And, Matt, they had a two-point game in their first one up there as I believe it was Davenport edging uh, Eastern Oregon in the first quarterfinal. Of course, we had the one point here. And if you think that's something, two more coming up next week. The Division I National Championship, the men in Kansas City, the women in Frankfort, Kentucky. And, again, that starts on Wednesday. Go to the NAI website. That's NAIA.org for more information. 5.45 to go here in the first half. Cardinal Stritch with a 21-20 lead over Dort. And we knew coming into this one how both teams have been the most consistent and the tournament, and it seems like, Matt, so far, both teams are kind of sticking to their scripts and uh, have not really been able to impose their will on the other, but it's been almost a stalemate. It definitely has. Neither team being getting able to run, both teams using their post play. Uh, they have fed the post uh, nonstop in every possession. Cardinal Stritch with the basketball up top after the uh, Wolves timeout. 21-20, Cardinal Stritch with the basketball. Down low goes to Semenez. Semenez leans in, puts it up and good. Semenez with his first basket comes in as the leading scorer for Cardinal Stritch, averaging 16 points per game. 23-20 in favor of the Wolves. Dort College with the basketball. Warner, left side to Kaiser. Kaiser down low to Vogel. Vogel. Up top to Lindbergh, now to Kachi. Kachi with it in the corner. Kachi on the perimeter. Kachi to Lindbergh. Lindbergh at the elbow. Passes up the shot. Kachi now with it. Kachi to Lindbergh. Eight seconds to shoot. And a foul from behind on Kraus. Carl Kraus with the personal foul. And Cardinal Stritch is over the limit. Jordan Vogel will step to the free throw line for a one and one. Tyler Walterstorff comes in for Kyle Lindbergh. So Jordan Vogel will step to the free throw line. Vogel, one of four 1,000-point scores on this roster for the defenders, shooting 66% from the foul line, averaging 13 points per game. Vogel, senior, puts it up, no good, rebounded by Kraus for Cardinal Stritch. Well, we've seen a lot of free throws in this entire event, uh, clang in and out, and boy, it was a huge factor in the previous game that really – and it cost Midland a chance to beat William Penn, the number one seed in the tournament. Simpson, three-pointer off the mark. Kachi there for the rebound for the defenders. And I think we're, we have had one three-pointer. That was by Rendell's for the defenders. Other than that, not a lot of perimeter play here. Vogel with a strong take and a blocking foul on Cardinal Stritch. Vogel will step to the line for two. You know, man, that kind of, even though we've seen good three-point shooting out of these squads, you, you know, you've got some of the bigger posts in the entire event that are in this game. That's a big factor. And, I mean, you, you, you really expect both teams are going to try to, you know, basically I think it's almost a matchup. I mean, who you can get more into foul trouble at the post to try to get an advantage. Vogel back to the line, and he misses. Second straight miss from the line for Jordan Vogel. 23-20, Cardinal stretch with the lead. 4.30 left to go in this first half. One more free throw coming for the senior, Jordan Vogel. And he pauses. Free throw good. Vogel. First points of the afternoon for Jordan Vogel. It's a two-point Cardinal Stritch lead, 23-21. to 21. Simpson will walk it up for Cardinal Stritch. Met by Cliff Warner. Right side it goes to Smith. Smith guarded by Tyler Walterstorff. Smith down the lane. Kick out to Ford. Ford over to Simpson. Simpson pulls up from 15. It's short. Tipped up. No good. Tipped up again. Good for 
Jamer Jeremy D'Amico, his second field goal. 25-21, Cardinal Stretch. A lot of interchangeable pours for Cardinal Stretch. They all played very well in there. D'Amico, great position on the rebound to get the knock in. And Kachi tries to force it down, stolen away by Kraus. Kraus, and it's swatted away by Vogel. Good hustle play by Jordan Vogel. Kraus is going to throw that down, but Vogel says, uh-uh, and a great hustle play there by the senior. You know, it is very easy on that play to get very frustrated and just watch the dunk, but, but Dort wasn't going to have any part of that, and just great hustle down there because that's a sure two that's off the board there because of the hustle by the defenders. 25-21. It'll still be Cardinal Stritch basketball after the defenders' turnover. Throwing it in will be uh, and Smith with it. Smith over to Ford. Ford will reset the Wolves' offense. Wolves with a four-point lead, chance to take their largest lead of the game. Semenez with it. Semenez gets it down low to Smith. Floater up, no good. Rebounded by Tyler Walterstorff. Again, good position on the post for Stritch. Just missed time the jump, and the defenders get a break there. Walterstorff with the rebound over to Kaiser. Kaiser up top to Warner. 3.30 left to go. It's a four-point Stritch lead. Kachi in the corner. Closely guarded. He can knock down some threes. Stritch has not let him get free. Kaiser with it. Gets a screen from Vogel. Vogel down low. Gets it to Walterstorff in the high post. Walterstorff puts it up off the glass. No good. Rebounded by D'Amico for Cardinal Stritch. The defenders have gone cold. Three ball on the way for Smith. Good. Tony Smith knocks down the three. It's a seven-point Cardinal Stritch lead. Timeout. Dort College defenders with 3.05 left to go. The French student athlete has a great ring to it. Join 60,000 others who feel the same way. You'll never run out of room to grow on the court, in the classroom, and as a person. There are lasting friendships waiting to be made with students, coaches, and the entire campus community. You can learn more at NAIA.org. That's Matt Boss. I'm half of Scott McCauley's voice. The whole person's here, but, you know, you get to this point in the, in the uh, championship and you've just seen so many great games and, you know, it's hard not to get excited as, as you see teams that have really worked hard. And, and, and I don't know if it's just this year's event, Matt, and I know this happens every year, but this group of teams that's made the quarterfinals, such a diversity of styles, uh, a diversity of how they got here. We've had underdogs. We've still got the top two seeds alive. Of course, William Penn now onto the final four after their thrilling victory over the next to last team to even get in the field here. And, uh, you know, the home team is still here. Uh, they're going to play an Indiana Southeast team here in the next game that just was solid yesterday. And I'm just I'm anxious to see that one. And you kind of got the two underdogs. Great, impressive wins. But Dakota State's been hanging on by their teeth, but yet they're still here. And, and who, and who knows what's going to happen. But, uh, you know, this is what makes this event to me so much fun is watching teams that have worked so hard over the first two days and now get to go play in this great atmosphere. Not only that, but you got teams who are new to this level of play. They've been here at the tournament before, but not many of them have advanced past this quarterfinal round. In fact, C of O, College of the Ozarks, they're in their sixth quarterfinal. They have the most left in this field. Dort College basketball, Lindbergh with a floater. Can't get it to fall and the rebound controlled by D'Amico for Cardinal Stritch. Dort College has gone ice cold. They have uh, gone scoreless since about the six minute mark. And it'll be Cardinal Stritch with the basketball and a seven point lead. Wolves bringing it out is Ford. Ford down low to Kraus and it's stolen away by Dort College. Kaiser with the steal, he'll bring it up. Kaiser over to Warner, Warner. Dort College could use a bucket here. They have been scoreless for about three, four minutes. Kaiser looking inside to Sievers. Sievers gets it weak side to Lindbergh. Poked away. Last touch by Cardinal Stritch. It'll be Dort College basketball. Nice ideal. Just uh, kind of a little bit high on the pass. Same at the other end. They had uh, Kraus wide open under the basket and just threw a little too much energy on it. And, you know, to overthrow uh, Kraus to get it above him, you have to put a little juice on it. He stands at 6'8". Dort College is going to go with their twin uh, twin towers, Vogel and Sievers. Warner, his jumper off the mark, no good. Fight for the rebound, tipped out to Kachi. Kachi, back to Warner. 2.07 to go until halftime. Kachi, back to Warner. Warner barking out the orders. Guarded by Ford. Warner has been held scoreless thus far. Vogel over to Kachi on the left side. Kachi to Kaiser. Kaiser over to Warner. Or college being uh, methodical. Vogel down in the lane and a reach in foul on Tony Smith. Smith whistled for his first. That's going to put Jordan Vogel at the free throw line for two. 
Well, and if you're doing here in the final few moments, uh, Ross Down, I think they've got a goal here. They need to keep it here or get a little bit closer. A lot of times teams worry so much about getting into the lead, they kind of lose sight of the fact that this is a two-half ball game. What Dort is working for in the final 148 is to get at least some momentum that will take him into the locker room at halftime, and they can certainly start by hitting a couple of free throws. And Vogel knocks down the first. He's got two points. Here comes Nathan Rindells into the lineup for Cliff Warner. It's a six-point Cardinal stretch lead pending the second free throw by Jordan Vogel. The winner advances to Monday's semifinal at 8 p.m., taking on either College of the Ozarks or Indiana University Southeast. Vogel's second free throw, off the mark, no good. Rebound tipped out and controlled by Tony Smith for Cardinal Stritch. 28-22 in favor of the Wolves. Bringing it up will be Ford. Ford guarded by Rendells. Ford up top to Semenez. Semenez guarded by Kaiser. Semenez looking for room to penetrate. Kaiser does a nice job defending him. Here comes Ford down the lane. Good D by Rendells. Kicks it out to D'Amico. 12 seconds to shoot. Ford up top, Ford down the lane, floater, no good. Kaiser with the rebound. Good defense on that series by the defenders. Kaiser over to Rindells. Rindells pushing it up. Now we'll slow it back up. Down low to Sievers, little floater, good. Chris Sievers has been the offense for the defenders. He's in double figures with 11. And a pretty test to get it around Krause as he tried to, he had to float it. Of course, Krause was in position, but got just the perfect angle to get it to sink, and that basket has got the defenders fans going. And there are a lot of defenders fans here. Under a minute to go, Dort College within four. See if they can get another stop. Ford brings it across. Rindell's playing great defense up front. Left side to Smith. Smith guarded by Kachi. Smith still with the basketball. He'll dribble it back out. 15 seconds to shoot. This is just going to get the Dort crowd even more uh, into this contest. Smith down the lane and a reach-in foul on Jordan Vogel. Vogel, that'll be his second. It's going to put the defenders over the limit and a one-and-one -one coming for Tony Smith. But here's what's critical about that situation. Because of where they ran the clock down, as long as Dort clears out on the rebound, if there's a free throw miss, they basically have the rest of the clock, the final shot of the half. Cardinal Stritch does have the arrow to start the second half, so a big sequence here for Dort. Trying to stay in it going into halftime. One and one for Smith. It's off the mark. Seavers with the rebound. Dort College can make it a one possession game. And Ross Dama off the bench talking to his guard and says, you know what, we are going to go for the final shot. Let's see if Cardinal Stritch puts a little pressure here to try to force him to work the ball and maybe force a turnover. Rendell's with the basketball. Rendell's guarded by Ford. Rendell's up top to Vogel. 15 seconds to shoot here. Down low. Kachi's pass is stolen away by Semenez. Semenez. And is fouled by Kaiser. Good foul and good play by Sean Kaiser. Makes Semenez earn it from the free throw line. Still eight and a half seconds to go until the break. You know, Dort may be one of the best teams I've seen at, at getting back after a situation like that. I just didn't, didn't think was any way anyone was going to get there. What this also does, even again, if Cardinal Stritch makes both free throws, is it does give Dort a chance for the final shot at the half again, even though they may be a little further down. The first free throw is no good, so... Cardinal Stritch Semenes misses the first one. He'll have one more on the way to try to get a five-point lead for the Wolves going into halftime. It's still 8.5 to go and a chance for Dort to get that final shot. Cliff Warner checks in for Rendell's for offense purposes. Eight and a half seconds left to go. Second free throw is good. Semenes with three points. He makes one of two free throws. The lead is five, 29-24. Warner quickly across the timeline. They got uh, four seconds now. Warner. Warner, left side, floater up, no good, and that's going to do it for this first half. Our score, Cardinal Stritch, 29, Dort College, 24 at the first half break. Going over the individual scoring totals, first of all for Cardinal Stritch. They were led by Nick Ford with eight points, Darren Moore with seven, five for Tony Smith, four for Jeremy D'Amico, and three for Derek Semenez, two for Isaac Quinn. Dort College was led in the first half by Chris Sievers with 11, four for Kyle Lindbergh, Two each for Austin Conchie, Trevor Walterstorff, Jordan Vogel, and a three for Nathan Rindells. 28-29-24 uh, is our halftime score. Number two, Cardinal Stritch leading Dort, the number 10 seed at the half. 50% shooting for Cardinal Stritch in the first half, 13 of 26. 36%, 8 of 22 for Dort in the first half. Only two three-point shots the entire half, one for each team. 
Two of five from the free throw line for Cardinals. Stretch seven to 12. Dort, uh, 58% in the first half. Rebounding edge to Cardinals. Stretch 15 to 14. Our halftime score again, 29 to 24. Cardinals stretch with the lead over Dort. We're gonna step aside for our halftime break. And when we come back, we'll have the second half of action as it's Cardinal Stretch and Dort in the NAI Division II Men's National Basketball Championship quarterfinals. This is coming from Point Lookout, Missouri, and it's brought to you by the NAI and New Lions.
2013 NEI Division II Men's Basketball National Championship. Second quarterfinal contest, and at the half of his second seed, Cardinal Stritch, leading number 10, Dort, 29 to 24. Earlier today, his top seed, William Penn, moving on with a 67-66 buzzer-beating win over Midland. Midland came in, coming in unseeded, and uh, it was William Penn with a buzzer beater from about 15 feet away. A kid hit a baseline jumper to put uh, William Penn into the semifinals for the first time. So one ticket has been punched into the final uh, semifinals on Monday. Second one uh, here, and it's Cardinal Stritch leading Dort 29 to 24. Again, by the numbers, Cardinal Stritch at 50% compared to 35% for the Dort College defenders. 25% from beyond the arc for Dort. They were one of four. Cardinal Stritch one of five. Rebounding numbers almost dead even. Cardinal Stritch with 15. Dort at 14. Dort College with eight turnovers. Cardinal Stritch with five. Top scores. it's Nick Ford with eight for Cardinal Stritch. Chris Severs with 11 for the defenders. Second half underway. It'll be Cardinal Stritch with the basketball. Starting five out there for both teams. It's Smith, Semenez, D'Amico, Ford, and Moore for Dort College. It's Warner Kachi, Trevor Walterstorf, Kyle Lindberg, and Jordan Vogel. And Cardinal Stritch works it up ball down to Darren Moore. Moore puts it up and in. He's got nine. 31-24, largest lead for either team. To start the second half, it's a seven-point stretch lead. Lindbergh with a basketball. Lindbergh over to Warner. Warner was held scoreless in that first half. To Kachi. Kachi also uh, without a field goal. He had two free throws. Vogel down the low, puts it up, and he's going to be called for the travel. Jordan Vogel whistled for the travel. That is turnover number nine for the defenders, and it'll be Cardinal Stretch basketball, a chance to add to their already seven-point lead, 31-24. Bringing it up will be Nick Ford. Ford had a nice first half, eight points for the Wolves. Into the corner goes to Smith, and Smith's entry pass stolen away by the defenders. Here come Dort, looking to run. Kachi, wide open three, it's a good look. Off the mark, no good, rebounded by Moore. That's one that the defenders got to have, and they have been hitting this tr at the championship. But you're in this pit situation now, Matt, with already Cardinal Stritz getting the first basket of the second half. A lot of times momentum can be dictated here in the first two or three minutes. Dort really needs to try to clamp down if they're going to stay in this ball game. Semenez gives it over to Ford. Ford cross-court pass to Semenez. Semenez into the paint, puts it up, no good. And Kachi with the rebound. Here comes Walterstorf. Walterstorf with the three-on-two break. Walterstorf out to Warner. And Warner will run the Dort College offense. Down low goes to Vogel. Puts it up off the glass. No good. Rebounded by D'Amico. And now a foul on Dort College. It'll be on Trevor Walterstorf. That is his third. He sat for a good deal of that first half with two. He just picked up his third early in the second. Yeah, barely two minutes in. And we'll see. He's going to stay in the game for right now. Trying to stay with it. But again... Right now, Dort a little bit slow out of the locker room. Cardinal Stretch already with the basket here in the second half and trying to stretch the lead, and this is really going to dictate. I now see Ross Dama going to the bench for a new player at the next dead ball. Tony Smith passes it over to Ford, misses the jumper, rebounded by Moore, and now Jordan Vogel rebounds Moore's miss, and a whistle and a foul, and this might be on Moore. If it is, that's his third. Looks like Moore may have hit his hand or something, got a little, uh, as they were fouling, fighting for the rebound inside, but that was a huge board to get for Dort right now as Cardinal Stretch looked like they had a point-blank shot inside, but great defense keeps the uh, defenders from giving up another basket. Chris Severs checks in for Walterstorff, so uh, no, Walterstorff's still in it. Severs for Vogel, Warner with a basketball. Severs down low, Severs drop step, and a foul on Moore. That's Moore's third. The other one was called on D'Amico. So Darren Moore, the starting post player, he's got three. And Chris Severs will go to the free throw line for two shots. You think that was kind of a matchup substitution right there? Because it looks like with the big kid in the ball game, that's a better matchup situation for Dort right here. Chris Severs with a little more size to him than Jordan Vogel. And Severs had a great first half, 11 points to lead all scores. And this senior puts it up and in. Severs, first free throw good. And here comes Isaac Quinn in for more. Quinn, he has three personal fouls. He picked up three quick ones in the first half. A 6'8 freshman from Kenosha, Wisconsin. 31-25, pending the free throw. It's good. Severs with 13 points. 
31-26 in favor of Cardinal Stritch. And again, points kind of at a premium. Slow, methodical, half-court offense being played here this afternoon. Semenez with a basketball. Semenez to Ford. Ford back to Semenez. Semenez into the paint. Good defense by Kyle Lindbergh. Up top to Ford. Ford right side to Smith. 12 seconds on the shot clock. Smith barking out the orders. Guarded by Trevor Waltersdorf. Smith fakes the three. Right side to D'Amico. D'Amico fires for three. No good. Waltersdorf there for the rebound. Waltersdorf controls the rebound. He'll take it up himself. Now to Lindbergh to Warner. Warner gets the screen, passes over to Kachi. Kachi to Walterstorf. Walterstorf to Warner. Warner to Kachi. Kachi into the paint. Floater. Got it. Austin Kachi with his first field goal. He's got four. And Dort College within three. And you guessed it, the crowd is on their feet. And a timeout called by Coach Drew Diener. Drew Diener senses that as well. It's a three-point game, and he's going to use a timeout early in the second half. Yeah, that sense was hearing, as we all heard <laughs> it, as the door crowd got into it. And, and, and in all seriousness, you know, you don't usually think about that in an individual side, but certainly the court for uh, the crowd for Dort is certainly a factor in uh, getting the defenders back in it. Student athletes come first in the NAIA. Their needs, desires, and ambitions guide the every decision. They are the inspiration that drives us to make character a core component and benefit all intercollegiate sports. Registers to get in the game at playnai.org. 16.42 to go, 31-28. Cardinals stretch with the lead, but after the first basket of the second half and a couple of missed possessions by both teams, it's all of a sudden Dort that's come up with four straight and climb back into this one. And this is kind of, you mentioned half court. Half court offense may have has been a bigger factor in this in this championship event than any I've seen in the last few years because teams are just not allowed, for the most part, to get those fast breaks going on a regular basis. So half court offense has certainly been in a premium. Dort College has, has done what they needed to do early in the second half, and that's uh, cut away at the Cardinal Stritch lead. It's at three, Cardinal Stritch with the basketball, leading 31 to 28. With the basketball is Tony Smith. Smith. Over to D'Amico. D'Amico to Isaac Quinn. Quinn on the floor in place of Darren Moore. There's a three ball by Smith. It's short, no good. Scramble for the rebound. Controlled by Quinn, and it's run down by Kaiser. Quinn's outlet pass stolen away by Kaiser. And here comes Dort College. They can cut it to one or tie with a three. Kaiser with the basketball. Kaiser down low to Sieber. Saves it from going out of bounds on the turnover on Dort. Tenth turnover. Pass ahead to Smith. Smith. Layup is no good, and a whistle and a foul on Dort College. It'll go against Sean Kaiser, I believe, his first team second of the half. And at the line will be Tony Smith to shoot two shots. Neither team uh, shooting free throws very well in that first half. Uh, Cardinal Stritch, let me grab my sheet here. Cardinal Stritch was just uh, two of five from the line. Dort College seven of 12. And Smith 0 for 1 in the first half from the line. Free throw up and good. Smith with one more free throw coming. And here comes Darren Moore back into the game for Isaac Quinn. Moore, the starting post player, coming into the game with three personal fouls. Both Quinn and Moore with three personal fouls. They are the, uh, that's the size for Stritch. Both standing about 6'7 or 6'8. Not on the floor together. It's four guards along with one of those post guys. Second free throw for Smith is up and good. He's got seven and a lead back up to five. 33 to 28. Warner will bring it across the timeline for the defenders. Warner with a basketball looking for Kaiser. Kaiser in the post. Kaiser with his back to the basket. He gets into the paint, gets his man in the air, and a foul on Jeremy D'Amico. D'Amico whistled for his third, and Sean Kaiser will go to the line for two. And Sean Kaiser with a great realization of what was going on there. He saw the defender there, and even though, and that's the defender, not his teammate, but the other team. i got to watch that when Torch play. But the thing is, he realized what was going on, and he wasn't really, I mean, he would have loved for the basket to go in, but the whole idea there, once he got in there, was to draw a foul, which he did. He got him up in the air and got the, con got the contact. One more free throw coming for Kaiser. High in the air, two good free throws there for Kaiser. 33 to 30, a three-point lead for Cardinal Stritch. Defenders one stop and a bucket from making this real interesting. And now a foul out front 
on Kaiser against Semenez. Kaiser whistled for his second straight foul. It'll be an out-of-bounds play coming for Cardinal Stritch. Back in is Chad Mazur, sophomore from Reedsburg, Wisconsin. Another third foul now. Kaiser now in the con in the area of three fouls, and that's not a huge factor now, but we still got 15.42 to go, so still got to be very, very careful here in the second half. Ford to trigger in for Cardinal Stritch. Ford still with the basketball. Down a little more, weak side, good. Darren Moore with the basket. And again, Walter Storff on the weak side, left him alone. He didn't want to get his fourth. Exactly, he left him alone. He got position quickly, got there before he could do anything. He had to back up. Kachi, long three, in and out, no good. Battle for the rebound, Warner has it, not a Kachi. Free throw line jumper, got it. Austin Kachi for another field goal. Back to a three-point lead for Cardinal Stritch. 35-32, 15 minutes left in this contest in regulation. Up top it goes to Smith. Smith guarded by Walterstorf. They have Dragas pivot foot. That's what the Dort faithful want. Down low to Ford. Ford will get it back and reset this, the Cardinal stretch offense. Ford with 10 seconds to shoot. Ford up top it goes to Mazur. Mazur to Semenez. And down low to Moore. Moore turnaround jumper. Off the glass no good and a foul on Seavers. Chris Seaver whistled for his first personal foul. And at the line will be Darren Moore for two shots. It does kind of become a foul game in there, doesn't it now, Matt? Especially with the fact that they're trying to counteract the post, it almost becomes a numbers game. How many fouls do you have to give inside? Seavers has got a few more inside, so he may be getting a few more minutes. Patrick Moore, or Darren Moore, rather. One for two from the line in the first half. This one is short, no good. And here comes Tyler Walterstorff into the game. He'll come in for his brother, Trevor, who leads with three personal fouls. Trevor did a nice job. He played smart. He was on the floor for a couple minutes there with three, but he didn't pick up his fourth, and Coach Dom is going to take him out and get him some rest and protect him a little bit, senior All-American. Moore, second free throw is good. Moore has got 12 points to lead Cardinal Stritch. It's 36-32 in favor of the Wolves. Defenders with a basketball chance to cut it to two or one with a three-pointer. Warner with a basketball right side. Up top, Kachi. Open three. No good. Rebounded by the defenders. That was Kaiser. Kaiser, open three. Kachi. Got it. Austin Kachi. That one bounced on the rim and fell through finally. Yeah. Thought we could have read a couple of announcements by the time that one got down there and hung in there, but what a huge one. And Conti was there back for about three seconds before one of his teammates saw him waiting to try to get the three and pulls the defenders within one. Ford down the lane, kicks it out to Semenez. He'll try a three. Defended well, rebound, controlled by Semenez. Semenez down the lane, kicks it out to Mazur for three. Got it. Big answer there for Chad Mazur, his first basket. Back to a four-point game, 39-35. Warner into the front court. Warner over to Kachi. Kachi guarded by Semenez. Kachi kick out to Kaiser, and he lost the handle and a turnover on the defenders. That is their 11th of the game. I think he expected Kachi to be a little bit further in than he was, and he hadn't got to the spot yet. He got double teamed, just a quick pass, didn't realize who was where. That's a big turnover now, especially after the big three by Cardinal Stretch. And now they have a chance to extend the lead a little bit here. And again, this game moment, it's just amazing. Every time someone makes a move, the other team has an answer. And it's just been back and forth like that the whole game. Punch, counter punch. And it, Mike Simpson checks back into the game. He'll launch a three in and out, no good. And the rebound, tracked down in the corner by Mazur. And a timeout called by Cardinal Stritch. Second straight offensive rebound. The first one led to a three-pointer for the Wolves. Now a timeout called by Coach Drew Diener. Yeah, that was a kind of an interesting situation because what happened is the player blocking out over there, and I believe it was Wallerstorff that was trying to block out. He had his back to the play and didn't realize the ball was loose. By the time he did, it actually deflected off of him right to Cardinal Stritch. So there will be a new shot clock for Cardinal Stritch. Pretty much 33 to go, 13-24 to go in the game. Cardinal Stritch leads this one 39-35. to 35. In the NAIA, we believe character shouldn't be just confined to the campus. It's a very grassroots process and is a result, one that speaks with authenticity and authority. Get your community involved in Champions of Character. Learn more at championofcharacter.org. Scott McCauley along with Matt Boss, 13-25 to go here in the second half. Quarterfinal number two. Again, hard time to live up to quarterfinal number one. William Penn, a shot at the buzzer. The number one seed survives by that one point, 67-66 over Midland. 
So William Penn will play in the winner of the late game here tonight. Although 7 o'clock doesn't seem as late as we've been here some nights. Dakota State and Grace, winner of this game, will take on the winner of the very next game. 5 o'clock Central Standard Time, the host College of the Ozarks against Indiana Southeast. Cardinal Stritch will have the basketball out of the timeout. 39-35, Wolves with a four-point lead. Checking in is Nathan Rindles, 6'1 freshman from Boulder, Colorado. He will get, uh, he saw some time in the first half. So Rindles will run the point. He'll come out and guard Mike Simpson. Simpson with the basketball. He'll dribble right side with 25 seconds to shoot. Simpson up top to Mazur. Mazur back to Simpson. Rindles provided some good defensive minutes, especially in that first half. And a take by Semenez. Shot up no good. Jordan Vogel, who also checks in for Chris Severs, tracks down the rebound. Rindles into the front court, guarded by Simpson. Rindles dribbles right side to Walterstorf. Walterstorf against Moore. Walterstorf still with a basketball. Walterstorf to Rindles. Rindles, baseline. Out to Walterstorf. Walterstorf. Up top to Kaiser. Down low to Vogel. Vogel's got position. Puts it up off the glass. Can't get it to fall. Darren Moore with another rebound for Cardinal Stritch. Good defense inside by Cardinal Stritch. You're right. He had the position but couldn't get the defender to back up enough to get a clean shot. 39-35, Stritch with the lead. 12.27 to go. Trevor Walterstorf set to come back in during the next dead ball opportunity. It's uh, Simmons with the basketball over to Simpson. Simpson now to Mazur. Mazur back to Derek Simenez. Simenez guarded by Kaiser. Picks up his dribble up top to Mazur. Mazur shot at the buzzer is good. Just inside the arc. Mazur with five, and it's a six-point Cardinal Stritch lead. Maybe the most frustrating thing in basketball is great defense for 34.999 seconds, but yet you throw one in, the other team does, out of desperation, even though he got a good look at it, still got it to go, great defense, but Cardinal Stritch is the one that wins that possession in the end. Kaiser with the basketball, down low to Vogel. He's got position, lays it up and good. Jordan Vogel was first field goal of the game. He's got four points, back to a four-point lead, 41-37. This one has been tight the entire way. The largest lead by either team was a seven-point lead for Stritch, and a travel called on Simpson. Turnover on Cardinal Stritch. They're sixth. It'll give the ball back to Dort College, and here comes a line change. We'll change sports on you. We'll go to hockey. It's Chris Sievers, Trevor Walterstorff, Cliff Warner, and Kyle Lindbergh back. They're going to leave Nathan Rindles out. That's a great description because every time we, we use that description, too, it's like in hockey, just bring a whole new team in to uh, try to get in this situation, see if you can cut into the lead. Lindbergh over to Rindles. Rindles up top to Lindbergh. Lindbergh down low to Severs. Puts it up. Off the glass. Good. Chris Severs with another bucket. And he's got 15, and the lead is down to 2. 41-39, Cardinal Stritch. And the defender faithful on their feet. Simpson with the basketball. Simpson on the right side, guarded by Rindles. Rindles providing the pressure. And it's Tony Smith up top, guarded by Walter Storff. Back over to Simpson, down low to Moore. Moore going to work, puts it up. Got it. Tough shot, and he hits it. Can't really do a lot about that. Seavers defended it well. Back to a four-point lead. What a battle between Moore and Seavers. Each one winning a battle at the offensive end on that last exchange. 43-39. Rindles with the basketball over to Warner. Warner. Guarded by Simpson, gets it to Seavers. Seavers back to Lindbergh. Lee Lindbergh to Seavers. He's got position. Good. Moore has got to be careful. He doesn't want to get his fourth, and Seavers feeling it. He's just got another easy layup. Well, and that's something I think Coach Deer may have to look at because really, when you got a situation like that, man, it's almost like playing five on four. That's exactly right. Simpson into the front court. Ten minutes left to go. Moore down the lane. Turn around jumper off the mark. Rebound controlled by Rindles. Rindles. Looking to run. He doesn't have the numbers right now. Rindles down low. Walter Storff wide open, and it's tied. 43 all. Rindles with the assist. Walter Storff the bucket. And I don't know. I don't know. I think we saw that one before the player saw him. He stood in the lane for about three seconds, or in the post for about three seconds before anybody saw him, and we are now tied at 43. Can Cardinal Stritch answer? Semenez, baseline drive. Tough shot, and he hits it. What an answer there for Derek. Semenez, 45-43, Cardinal Stritch with the lead. Dort with the basketball, Lindbergh into the lane. Down low to Walterstorff, leans in, good! Walterstorff with two more, Lindbergh the assist, tied at 45. Here we go again. This has been the norm, folks. 
of this whole championship event. Just counter punch after counter punch. So many terrific games, and we got another one. Looks like it's going to the wire. Cements, Semenez hits the three. That's another tough shot. He's starting to heat up. The leading scorer for the Wolves, and it's 48-45. Okay, ball now in. Dort's court literally here as they see if they can have an answer at 845. Rindles to Walterstorf and a whistle and a officials timeout. Not sure what this is going to be about. The bottom official talking with the top. Any ideas? I know. Well, they're going to go over here to the... Uh... They're going to probably check to see if it was a three. That's my guess. Was his foot on that's the line? A, that's what they're going to... That has to be it. I don't... I think and Coach Dalma was asking for that because that official was right over there by Coach yeah. Dalma. My biker down there, the door to answer, has said that that's what they just heard. He just heard that they're going to look and see if he had his foot on the line or not. Still a big shot either way. And uh, I tell you what, you've been right about Simez. He's been the one that's been given, given the answer the last two or three times down the court. He's been Cardinal Stritch's go-to player. And uh, Cardinal Stritch, it's amazing. I mean, we're taking a look at the top two seeds, William Penn, Taken to the wire by Midland. Here's the number two seed getting all they want from Dort. And I, I say it again. And, yes, Dort is a number 10 seed, so they're certainly in the top 25. But, man, it just, it just shows you the balance that, that we have in this field this year. It just The numbers really don't mean anything. Throw Everyone's out, even, yeah. Throw out the seeding because it certainly doesn't mean anything. Seeded teams have not had the best of luck at this tournament. But, that's, but the funny thing is, is we st it's still with, that all, with all that, number one has still got through. They survived a couple of scares, but they've got through. Number two right now up by either two or three, and they're going to take a look at it. That's what they're doing. Pete Hansen, who's the uh, supervisor, coordinator of officials, they got a monitor down there. They're going to look at it and uh, check it out and see if he had three or two. And they're not quite to that point yet. And this is, a, this is a good thing for the officials to do. A stage like this, you don't want to make the wrong call, and they're going to confirm or deny this here. Yeah, so they're running it back. And, again, I, I think they it's a system that you have to get to a certain point. I don't think you can just automatically go to that point. So I think they're there right now, and they're going to have a follow-up. And on the kickout, they'll see if it actually was or not. 48-45, Cardinal Stretch, 8-44 left to go in this one. Gives me a chance to remind you that student athletes come first in the NAIA. Their needs, desires, and ambitions guide our every decision. They are the inspiration that drives us to make character a core component and benefit of intercollegiate sports. Register to get in the game at playnai.org. Quite a delay here, Scott. And uh, I'm not. I was just thinking about who this kind of favors. Dort with a little bit of a run, a little bit of momentum. Not sure if this will affect either team positively or negatively but a, quite a bit of a stoppage of play as they look at the replay. Well, and I think the way the files were set up, they had to go back to a point, so they had to actually run a couple of minutes to get there, and so now uh, they have made the determination. They've seen what they needed to see, and they're going to go to each one. I think they're going to keep it at a yep. three. They're going to keep it a three, so it'll still be 48-45 with 8.44 left to go. It'll be Dort College basketball. You know, and you know, momentum is certainly big, and you know, I think they do this as quickly as they can do it. But, you know, I think even if I'm the team with momentum, I'd rather take an extra few minutes to make sure we get it right than to, to just say we hope. So I think a good job by the officials. They realized they had a situation. They handled it, and the call was confirmed. 48-45 is the score. Cardinal Stritch with the lead, and it will be Dort to inbound at 8.44 to go. Dort College with the basketball. And... Did, I think Dort just uh, lost a timeout, so when you get a review, apparently you lose a timeout. Yes, it was requested, so that's why that happened. So Dort with the basketball and trying with the three, they could tie it. Rindles over to Vogel. Vogel to Warner, three ball off the mark, and the rebound controlled by Cardinal Stritch. Tony Smith with the rebound, and here comes Cardinal Stritch with a three-point lead. 8.29 left to go. It'll be Ford with the basketball. Ford. Ford passes it back door to Semenez, and Semenez has it blocked off of his knee. It'll be Dort College basketball. What a block that time. Going to the basket, and Vogel got in there and blocked it from behind, and as he blocked it, the ball went right down on his leg and slid out of bounds, of course. 
Throws to Diener, is not very happy about that, and I think he wanted maybe a review of that, but or something, he was looking over here at the table, but the officials were pretty uh, adamant that it went off of him out of bounds, and now here's Jordan, a chance again to tie with the tray. Warner to Lindbergh, Lindbergh, Kachi, open three, got it! That's gonna tie it at 48. Austin Kachi, is second three, he's got 12 for the game. Every time this has happened, man, Cardinal Stretch has had an answer. And it's been Simenez that they've been going to the last few times down court. And Simenez has it st nearly stolen by Lindbergh in a numbers advantage. Gets it down low to Simenez, and he misses the shot. Warner with the rebound. Dort College can take its first lead of the second half. Warner to Vogel. Vogel nearly throws it down. And are they going to count it? Yeah. It's a blocking foul. Jordan Vogel will go to the line for the three-point play opportunity. That was one of those 50-50 calls, Scott. I had to hesitate just a minute. I didn't know if it was a charge or a block. And it was very, very close, but they did call it inside on Simenez as he was uh, lining up. Actually, it was Nick Ford inside that they called for it. And, you know, it was pretty brave just to get in position to take it because he was bearing down on him pretty hard, and he slid up from under him and just did not get positioned according to the officials in time. And so that gives Dort a chance for the three-point play and a big lead here at 7.34 to go. The defender was there, but I wonder if he was in that arc. I don't think he was too far down. That may have been the call, but one of those 50-50 calls. Vogel, free throw, no good. But Dort College with their first lead since the about the 10-minute uh, mark of the first half. 50-48 to 48 defenders. 7.20 left to go. It'll be Nick Ford with the basketball, guarded by Warner. Ford up top to Smith, misses the jumper, Kaiser with the rebound. Kaiser with the rebound, he'll give it up to Warner. Warner is still not scored in this contest. Still waiting for the All-American to, to score. Kachi, long three, off the mark, no good. And Kaiser with the, re, uh, with the foul, going after the rebound on D'Amico. Kaiser whistled for his fourth personal foul. Tough one to get your fourth foul on, especially on a rebound it looked like it was gonna go Cardinal stretch way to begin with. So now a decision for Ross Dama if at 7.05 you go to the bench, it looks like he will, and he will leave the ball game for a little bit. Kyle Lindbergh checks in for Kaiser. It's Warner, Kachi, Walterstorf, Lindbergh, and Vogel, the starting five out there for the defenders. And now Dort is going to play a little full court man. Now they're going to retreat a little bit. They denied the inbounds pass. Now they're going to back off, play half court. 50-48, to 48, Dort, Dort College with the lead, under seven minutes to go. Darren Moore with the basketball, nice set play. Backdoor pass to Semenez again, and he's got two more. Moore with the nice pass, he's, he's been, got 10. He's been the answer man for Cardinal Stretch this entire second half. Tied at 50, Kaiser to Lindbergh. Lindbergh, top of the key, standing there unguarded over to Kachi, Kachi. Free throw line jumper, too strong. Walter Storr battling Moore for the rebound. It's Moore who comes up with it. And it will be Cardinal Stretch basketball, and they have a chance to retake the lead. Tied at 50. Bringing it up will be Ford. Ford hands it off to Smith. Smith to Semenez. Semenez at the foul line, right side to Ford. Ford, he'll try a three short, and the rebound's going to go out of bounds. It'll be Dort College basketball tied at 50. Here comes Nathan Rindles in for Austin Kachi with 6.08 left to go. Ford had an open look at it, but sometimes, it, and we saw this several times in the first game, when you get that maybe unexpected opening, you're so much in a hurry to get the ball to the basket to get the shot up. You don't put enough on it. You don't take the time to square because you're afraid, well, I can't be this open. I'm going to get a defender here any time now. And I think that's what happened to Ford that time. He just didn't have enough on the shot. It fell short, and that gives the defenders now a chance to retake the lead. 6.08 to go, 50-50. The chances of who's going to win the game besides being the score. And, uh, oh, and folks, we will tell you, for those folks that are watching, we got two more coming up after this one. It'll be Dort College basketball with six minutes left to go. Warner, Rindles, Vogel, Lindbergh, and Trevor Walterstorff, the five on the floor. Rindles on the left wing. Rindles running the point. Warner, the two guard in this lineup. Warner. Down the lane, gets it up top to Lindbergh. Lindbergh, he'll penetrate, gets it to Vogel. Vogel off the glass, two. Jordan Vogel with two more. He's got eight. Six of them coming in the second half, and Dort College back in front, 52 to 50. So the defenders with a two-point lead, 5.30 
Left to go. Walking it up is Nick Ford. Ford guarded by Warner. Ford looking underneath. Two more. Nothing there. Vogel playing behind him. Now Moore gets it. He's double teamed. Kicks it out to Smith. Smith over to D'Amico. D'Amico to Semenez. Semenez right side. Nice pass to Moore. Puts it up and in. Good penetration by Semenez. And that set up Moore's field goal. Well, if Cardinal Stretch ends up winning this ball game, it, it really fall out of the falls on Semenez because he has just been, again, as I said, the answer man that time had the great assist to get Cardinal Stretch back even in this one. Vogel to Rindles. Rindles to Warner. Warner gets the screen from Lindbergh. Warner. Pulls up from 10, off the mark, no good. Rebounded by Derek Semenez. And Cardinal Stretch with a chance to take the lead. Boy, Warnich has been off the mark today, hasn't he? He has not scored yet for the defenders. It'll be Cardinal Stretch with the basketball. Ford up top to Smith. Smith to Semenez. Semenez back to Ford. And they're going to dare Ford to shoot. He misses the 15-footer. Lindbergh with the rebound. Lindbergh with the rebound, his third of the game. And bring it up will be Rindles. Rindles will dribble right side. Rindles gets the screen, gives it back to Vogel. Now back to Rindles. Warner up top with it, guarded by Ford. Over to Walterstorf. Walterstorf to Vogel. Vogel, he'll turn and face up Moore. Moore to Rindles. Vogel splits the double team. Out to Warner. Three ball. Off the mark, no good. And Walterstorf has the rebound swatted out of his hand as he hits the floor hard, and it's going to stay with Dort College with 3.55 to go. Didn't have the best angle on that one, but I really thought it was incidental contact, hard incidental contact, because it looked like both players had their back to each other. And, I, you know, I don't know what the discussion, and again, not having a great look at it, I can't really comment any more than just to say it looked like they were both had their back in just incidental contact. Warner will throw it into Lindbergh. Lindbergh got the foul line. Guarded by D'Amico, Walterstorff posting up, gets it back to Lindbergh, now to Warner. Warner, guardly, guarded closely by Ford. Ford over to Rindles, Rindles to Seavers. Rindles, his three ball is short, and the rebound tracked down by Nick Ford. Ford will take it across the timeline. I think that shot was partially blocked. And Semenez, three ball, got it. Derek Semenez with a big three, 55-52. You never know when that big shot is going to come. That might be the shot of the game right there. I want to say it again, the answer man. He has been the guy for Cardinal Stritch here in the second half. Walter Storff to Rinde Rindles. Rindles to Warner. Warner to Lindbergh. Lindbergh on the baseline. Lindbergh into the paint. Puts it up. Can't get it to fall. And the rebound tipped out by Cardinal Stritch. And it will be Dort College basketball. That's going to get Coach Drew Dieter up. He thought that Dort tipped it out. It'll be Defender basketball, Sean Kaiser back in along with Austin Kachi. 3.04 to go, Cardinal Stritch on top by three, 55-52. Kachi with the basketball, gets it in low to Walterstorf, can't get it to fall and Moore with the rebound. And it'll be Stritch with a chance to take more than their three point lead, 55-52 and a timeout called by the Wolves. 2.53 left to go. Cardinal Stritch on top, 55-52 over North College in the quarterfinals. 60,000 student athletes, close to 300 college campuses, 23 national championship events, and $450 million in athletic aid. Get in the game today at playnaia.org. Scott McCauley along with Matt Boss as we continue to bring you the very dull quarterfinals of the NAI Division II National Basketball Championship. He said very sarcastically, as uh, we've had a one-point game already, we got a three-point game, 253. And Matt, I, I really believe this is the possession of the game right here. 253 to go. Cardinal Stritch has got the ball, and I think that's why Drew Diener took a timeout. He realizes how important this is. If they can get a basket here, this late in the ball game, you now start talking possessions because any point, even a free throw here, makes it a two-possession ball game. And then you got to kind of start counting your possessions on actually how much time do you have left in the ball game. You look at Ross Adama's situation, I mean, he knows this too, and it goes for his defense too. If they can get a stop here and get a three or even a two here, then we're really kind of still back to where we were. But you, you almost think that the first team now under three minutes that gets a two-possession lead is in pretty good shape. 
2.53 to go, 55-52 Cardinal Stritch, and the Wolves will have the basketball. You look at the foul situation, five team fouls for Dort, four on Cardinal Stritch, neither team in the one and one at this point. It'll be Cardinal Stritch with the basketball right in front of us. And they will inbound it uh, right by media row or press row, and the inbounds pass goes to Nick Ford. Ford. We'll walk it up. Ford up top to Semenez. Semenez gives it up to Smith. Smith to Semenez. Semenez guarded by Kaiser. Down low to Moore. Moore posting up Seavers. He's double teamed. And he traveled with the basketball. Dort College gets the stop they needed. Now can they capitalize on the offensive end? You're right. So they got what they needed. They got the stop. Now it becomes the it's really the shoe on the other foot now. Dort with a big offensive position staying it. Cardinal Stritch needing a big stop here. If you're Dort, you got to come up with points. And there's a steal by Semenez. Semenez with the steal. Layup is good. Count it and one. Sean Kaiser with the foul. Kaiser with his fifth personal foul after the turnover. And Derek Semenez will step to the free throw line to try to convert the three-point play. You know, for us folks that do this for a living, you kind of look for storylines, but it's not hard for Cardinal Stritch. I mean, what can you say about uh, Derek Semenez, the junior? He has just had the answer every time that Dort has made a run. I mean, just remarkable. That time he does it on defense, he gets down court, he gets the basket, and now gets a chance to put a real big dent in the game. He doesn't do it, but still, five points, a big lead with 2.21 to go. 57-52, Warner will bring it up for the defenders. Warner up top to Lindbergh. Lindbergh looking for Kachi. Kachi defended quite well. Walter Storff, he'll get into the lane, puts up the shot, no good. Fight for the rebound. Alternate possession is going to favor the defenders, so Dort gets a break on the alternate possession. And they'll throw it in from underneath. But what's real important to know here is because it was a held ball, they do not get a shot clock reset. So the shot clock stays at 17 for Dort. So it's only 17 only for Dort to shoot in this possession. Just over two minutes to go. Dort College with the inbounds pass. Warner throws it in long to Walterstorf. Walterstorf to Warner. Warner, three ball. Off the mark, no good. And another jump ball called on the re fight for the rebound. It'll go to Cardinal Stritch this time. All right, now 158 to go, and, and you've seen Dort a lot more than I have. How do you think Ross Dalma's going to handle this? Is he going to is he going to try? We'll talk a little bit about it during the Cardinal Stritch timeout. Will he try to start immediately, or is he going to use the shot clock and try to get another stop here? I think he's going to use the shot clock. He's going to try for one stop and then uh, try to score and then he'll foul. That's just a guess, uh, but yeah, Cardinal Stretch, they've hit some tough shots down the, down the stretch. They are on uh, a seven nothing run over the last two minutes. Dort has not had a basket since uh, a bucket by, by Jordan Vogel put him up 52-50. And Semenez again has had the big shots for Dort. He has 13 points, but uh, a lot of those have come here in the second half when they've needed it. Uh, they've been able to get it. The junior guard from Rosendale, Wisconsin, actually transferred from University of Wisconsin, Green Bay, and what a big uh, addition for Cardinal Stretch. And this is a, a situation where they are in, certainly got the ball in their court right now with the ball, but again, how will Ross Dalma handle it? How will Dort handle it? But more importantly, well, will Cardinal Stretch go with the ball now coming down the stretch here in the last few seconds? If you're the Wolves, you look for Semenez. I mean, who else do you look for? Maybe you look for more underneath or play a little two-man game with those two, but those two have uh, had the bulk of the scoring in the second half. Well, and this is a situation we've talked a lot about it on our NAI.org presentations. Obviously, Cardinal Stretch wants to run some clock. I don't think that's any secret, but Dort has to be careful not to put too much pressure on the ball because they got someone open underneath. They'll try to get to him for an easy layup. And Dort College will pick up full court. Nathan Rindles will check in to pro provide the defensive pressure. Lindbergh, Seavers, Walterstorff, Kachi, and Rindles on the floor. Tony Smith will bring it up for Stretch over to Ford. Ford into the paint, puts it up, got it. Nick Ford with the bucket, he's got 10. First bucket of the second half, 59-52 in favor of Cardinal Stritch. Rindles with it up top, up top to Lindbergh. Lindbergh still with the basketball. Dort College has got to be a little more uh, frantic than this. Rindles, open three, got it! 
Nathan Rindles with a second three. 59-55, timeout defenders, a four-point game with 118 left to go. Folks, in this particular event, the concept of being able to put someone away pretty much foreign because it just doesn't happen. You know, that was a possession where basically if Dorn doesn't score, this is probably over or pretty close to being over. But a big, big three hit in the corner, still a two-possession game, but much better than a three-possession game at 59-55. So now we go back to the same situation, and I think you do nothing differently. And, and Cardinal Stritz did something that we were just talking about on that particular possession. Nick Ford saw the opening, so he went ahead and took it. Certainly there's no such thing as a no-risk shot, but certainly was a shot that was, you know, is something that you could get done there, and they were able to get it done and get the basket, but Dort had the answer. So now let's see what happens with Cardinal Stritch. 118 to go, and it looks like, again, Dort's going to put full court pressure on. Big shot for the freshman Rindles, his second three of the game, but a, what a time to come up big for your team on a big stage like this for the freshman. And it'll be Cardinal Stritch basketball, and Dort College will back off and now play three-quarters court defense. Man to man, 111 left to go. It's a four point stretch lead. Dribbling out front is Ford. Ford over to Smith. Back to Ford. Rindles providing the pressure. Ford still with it up front. Gives it up to Smith. Smith down to 13 seconds on the shot clock already. Rindles nearly with the steal. And now it's kind of a five on four, a wild pass gone awry. Trevor Walter picks up the loose ball. Dort College can cut it to a one possession game, cut it to two or one. Rindles to Lindbergh. Lindbergh, top of the key. Still with the basketball, over to Kachi. Kachi thought about the three, gives it down low to Seavers. Seavers posting up, lost it out of bounds, and a turnover on Dort College. It'll be Cardinal stretch basketball. He tried to get around the perimeter. And, and Seavers didn't, could not get around it. What happened is Moore got to the baseline, cut him off, and there was just nothing he could do. He tried to get to the baseline, dribbles it off his foot. D'Amico out, Mike Simpson in for Cardinal Stretch, another ball handler, and Simpson is the one that gets it. Simpson throws it up to Semenez. Semenez, now Cardinal Stretch is going to spread the floor and a foul on Rindells. And it'll be a one-and-one -one situation for Cardinal Stritch with 23 seconds left to go. It's a two-possession game, a four-point lead. Cliff Warner will come in for Rindles. Offense for defense, substitution. At the line will be senior point guard Nick Ford. Senior from Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. He's got 10 points, has not shot a free throw today. Check you the percentage, 74% on the season at the line and a big spot here for the senior point guard. One of the three returning starters for this Wolves team. It's a one and one, just a seventh team foul on the defenders. And it's short, Lindbergh with the rebound. Here comes Walterstorf. Walterstorf looking to go. Walterstorf is gonna get a screen from Warner. Walterstorf over to Lindbergh. He'll fire a three, got it! Three pointer, Kyle Lindbergh, timeout, Coach Ross Dalma. Is there a little more magic here in this one? Can you believe it? 59-58, Cardinal Stritch with the lead, but Dort with a three, cuts it to one. And I was about to say they didn't need a three, they just needed a basket because you still are going to be in a, you're going to be in a deficit unless you get a foul on a three-point shot. He was just standing all by himself and went in, fired it to the basket, and he got it to go. And now with 12.5 to go, you know there's going to be a quick foul and even even if Cardinal Stretch makes two free throws, even if they do that, Dort's going to have a shot for the tie. 59-58 after the three-pointer by Lindbergh. He's got seven, his first three of the ball game. 12 and a half seconds left to go. And 59-58, Cardinal Stretch. Again, Dort with seven team fouls, so it'll still be a one and one. If Dort does not come up with, steal, with the steal, they will foul. Cardinal Stretch is a team shooting 72%. Simenez is at 78%, 79%. He's their best free throw shooter. Ford went to the line a moment ago, not bad, 74%, but he didn't miss. And sometimes you go in a situation, do you just try to, I mean, obviously Cardinal Stretch is going to have the best free throw shooters try to have the ball in their hands, but again, even with Ford and 72%, and I don't even see him on the court right Well, Actually, he's going to throw the ball in bounds, but you know they're going to try to get it to their free throw shooter's hands the best they can. And, Interesting setup as Cardinal Stretch sets up at midcourt. They're going to run a little stack play. 
And they get Simpson open. Simpson to Ford and a foul on Austin Kachi. That was a very nice play. They got Simpson down there, and they just had basically a touch pass to get Ford the ball and get him to the free throw line. So Nick Ford will go to the line once again for a one and one. Chris Seavers in for Rindles. And again, Ford just missed the front end of a one and one. 59-58, Cardinals stretch. With a one-point lead, the best they can do is be up three here. Dort will have a shot if they can, can control the rebound. And Nick Ford at the line. He's got ten points, 0 for 1 from the line. Front end of a one and one. It is up and good. A two-point Cardinal stretch lead. Bonus free throw coming for Ford. 60 to 58. Our score. Semifinal berth on the line between Cardinal Stretch and Dort College. Ford's second free throw is good, so Dort needs a three. 61-58, and a timeout called by Coach Drew Diener of Cardinal Stretch. 61-58 after two free throws by Nick Ford. 11.2 seconds to go, plenty of time if you're the defenders to get off a three here. If the defense will let you, and, and what Drew Diener, I'm sure, is going to talk to his ball club about right now is it's very it's an easy situation but it's a tough situation i mean basically you could just vacate the interior of the arc because a two although if they get a quick two they can certainly do a quick foul so i know you don't want to totally ignore it but they do have to have a three to tie the one thing you don't want to do is be so close to them that someone throws a three up gets fouled it goes in and you're looking at a possible four-point play so you've got to be tenacious on defense but you also got to be smart you just can't and not necessarily maybe nose-to-nose -nose defense, but you got to put a lot of pressure on them. And the main thing that you want to do if you're Cardinal Stretch is you want Dort to burn time getting the ball in position, only 11.2 left. Also, you got uh, several fouls to give. Cardinal Stretch with just four team fouls right now, and uh, that's an option as well. You know, you can, you can foul here, make sure that Dort's not in the act of shooting, but it's going to force the defenders to use clock and throw it in, get out of a rhythm, out, out of a set play here. Cardinal Stretch will have Moore, Ford, D'Amico, Semenez, and Smith, the starting five out there on the floor. Actually, Simpson in for D'Amico. It'll be Lindbergh, Kachi, Walterstorff, Rindles, and Warner, and now another timeout. A little chess match going on between the two head coaches. This time it will be Coach Ross Dalma who sees the alignment that Cardinal Stritch is in, and now he's going to counter that here and call a timeout and talk things over. And I have always wondered about this. If you're a coach that had an alignment and the other coach calls a timeout, do you stick with your first instinct or do you switch things up? Um, you know, and I think sometimes, I even heard a coach say one time, they actually put a lineup up there, but they're not really sure they were going to do that, anticipating the timeout and then they'll get over there and get what they're really going to do. So, I mean, this is the one that's always fascinated me is, you know, what do you, you know, are you adjusting to something that's not going to happen? Or do you call the timeout hoping they're going to change? I mean, a lot of things at play here. And that's why we are here and not over there in the huddle. Yeah. I don't know if there is an answer. I don't know what that answer would be. I'm going honestly. crazy thinking about it. I'm just <laughs> broadcasting the game. That's all I'm thinking about right now. Don't forget, besides the NAI Division II National Championships, Division I National Championships coming up next week, the men in Kansas City, the women in Frankfort, Kentucky. It starts on Wednesday. You can go to NAIA.org to get more information about more streaming of NAIA championships. So here we go, 11.2 to go. It will be Dort with the basketball, length of the court to go, and as Matt says, they need a three to tie the game. 61-58. Same five for both teams. For Dort, it'll be Rindles, Walterstorff, Lindbergh will throw it in, Warner and Kachi. Kachi is the defenders. Kachi and Warner are the two top three-point shooters. It'll be Rindles who will bring it up, and he's immediately fouled by Nick Ford. And here's one thing we didn't even think about. Cardinal Stritch has got fouls to give right now, and so what they can do is they can really shorten the game for Dort. they still got one more to give here. It'll be Dort to inbound right in front of us. Lindbergh to th trigger in. He gets it into Walterstorff. Walterstorff, top of the key. Kachi, three ball. Got it! Oh, my! Kachi hit the three. Five seconds to go. A lot of time yet. Semenez down the lane. Can't convert. We're going to overtime. Unbelievable. Unbelievable, Scott. Wow, what a finish. Well, and what I think they tried to do 
is I really think that Cardinal Stretch wanted to foul in that situation, but they could not connect with someone to get the foul. They couldn't find one. They left a player wide open in the corner, and we've got another overtime coming up in this championship. Five more minutes, and the defenders have magic, and I thought I was the only one that screamed at the end of games. I guess that's not the case it is, as Matt Boss, I, you know, we just had a one-pointer in the last game as William Penn hits one to win it at the buzzer, and here's one, and yet, even for all that, Simonez had a different look down at the other end and almost won this thing for Cardinal Stretch. Oftentimes, that, that's the thing they got overlooked because if I would hit a shot, I'd be dancing. But Dort had the presence of mind to get back just enough to bother that and now to send it into overtime. Oh, my goodness. You want to work a little extra? Why I guess not? It's fun. What a game. Wow. Gachi with the three-pointer, his third of the second half. And that ties it at 61. And five more minutes, folks. Bonus coverage here at the Keter Gymnasium, home of the 2013 NEI Division II Men's Basketball National Championships. So we'll have another jump ball as these two teams going toe to toe. Now remember, it's something else to consider in the overtime. Both of these teams had some foul issues to deal with, so we'll see how that will come uh, to bear as we get down the stretch here. It'll be Vogel jumping it up against Moore, and Nick Ford controls it for Cardinal Stritch. It'll be Wolves basketball to start the overtime period. Ford dribbles right side, guarded by Warner. Ford looking up top, a near steal by Walter Store. Ford gets it back, and he'll give it up to Smith. Three ball, got it. Tough shot, Tony Smith, his second three of the game. Cardinal Stritch with a 64-61 lead. And credit Cardinal Stritch there after everything had happened. They come up with a good possession to start out the overtime and get a quick three. Vogel gives it to Kachi. Kachi to Warner. Now to Vogel. Vogel will turn and face more. Vogel going to work. Puts it up. Can't convert. Tips it on a zone miss it. And good. Vogel with eight points or eight field uh, eight points via field goals in the second half. And it's a one-point game, 64-63 in favor of Cardinal Stritch. Walking it up will be Nick Ford. One minute gone by in this overtime. Ford with the basketball. Ford guarded by Warner. Ford dribbles it out front, looking for more. Vogel is there. Gives it up top to D'Amico. D'Amico guarded by Kachi. Ford gets it back. Lindbergh on Semenez. Ford into the paint, and he traveled. That's a good call. The top official had the best, best angle. Saw it. And it'll be a traveling call. Dort College with a basketball chance to take the lead. And it was also spurred on by the defender defense that time as they came in and just closed the gap. And when Ford went to the basket, he took that extra step. So now Dort with a chance to take the lead here in overtime. Warner, high post entry to Lindbergh. Lindbergh looking for Walter Storff. Now Warner gets it back. Three ball, just short, rebounded by Semenez for Cardinal Stritch. Again, Warner still scoreless in this one. Dort College in this ball game without their senior scoring any. Yeah, Warner just kind of looks at the basket. What do I got to do here? It just, it's just not his day, but his team is still in it. That one was just off the mark. It thought about falling. Ford out front with it. 316 left to go. Ford with the basketball. Just standing around. Cardinal Stritch methodical in their half court here. Here comes Smith down the lane. And a tough shot. Missed Lindbergh with the rebound. And Lindbergh will take it up himself. Lindbergh still with the basketball. D'Amico will meet him at the top of the key. Lindbergh over to Kachi. Kachi up top to Warner. Under three minutes to go in the overtime. 64-63 stretch. Walterstorf for the basketball. Walterstorf, they'll clear out. He'll get to the rim. Tough shot, no good. Rebound tipped out to Kachi. Shot clock doesn't reset. Lindbergh, he'll try a three, no good. And the rebound controlled by Darren Moore. Cardinal Stretch with a chance to build on their one-point lead, 64-63. Wolves will walk it up once again. Ford with the basketball. Ford over to Smith. Smith guarded by Walter Storff. Now Ford looking down low to Moore. Moore gives it back to Ford, and he traveled with the basketball. Both teams a little out of sync offensively. Credit the defenses. You could look at it as bad offense. I'd like to think it as both teams playing tremendous defense here this afternoon. I also would like to think of it as both teams really intense knowing a berth in the final four 
is at stake here. And a lot of times you're going to get over anxious. You're going to do a few things sometimes. And in this atmosphere, mistakes are going to happen. But it's overcoming those mistakes is what makes it special. Now again, Dort has another chance to take the lead in this one. Warner over to Seavers. Seavers checks in for Vogel. Down low to Lindbergh. Lindbergh posting up. Baby hook. Got it. Kyle Lindbergh puts Dort on top. 65-64. Under two minutes to go, and the defender faithful on their feet once again. Ford looking for more. Out to Semenez. Does he have another one? He does. My goodness, Derek Semenez. Ice. Ice going through those veins. 67-65. Oh, what a great game he has had. Just a gutty effort by him. And I know he's got a lot of help from his teammates, but he has really almost taken the team on his shoulder to keep him in this thing. Lindbergh at the foul line. Turns and turns and faces. Gets his man in the air. Warner on the perimeter. Gives it back to Lindbergh. 13 seconds to shoot. Seavers going to work. Puts it up. Can't get more in the air. Puts it up anyway. Got it. Seavers with a tough two over Moore. Tied at 67. I tell you what, I don't know how. I know Cardinal Stretch wants the call. I don't know how he didn't walk because there was nothing wrong with Moore's defense. Even with fouls, that was just a great play by Seavers. And timeout will be called by Cardinal Stritch. 102 to go, 67 all. We are in overtime. 102 and, left to go, wow. In overtime. And oh, by the way, in case you forgot, we do have two more coming up today. <laughs> and uh, it's going to be College of the Ozarks in Indiana Southeast. That game will not start at 5 o'clock. It will start probably closer to... Uh, 5.15 or so will probably be the projected start time of that one, assuming that uh, we're not playing any more than one overtime here today. And really looking forward to that matchup. Of course, the host team, there's a bunch of fans for the host game waiting to get in, but a bunch of Dort Defender fans have got some seats. And, and I will say this, even though they're outnumbered, Cardinal Stritch has certainly been heard in this gymnasium today as well. And then, oh, by the way, the late game tonight, which, and the late games this week have been tremendous as well. Dakota State who uh, won a one-point decision last night just again here, taking on a Grace team uh, unseated, but both Dakota State and Grace nationally ranked and uh, both playing good basketball right now. And uh, But I tell you what, and I'll be doing the College of the Ozarks game locally here on radio, assuming we ever get this one done. <laughs> and, um, you know, I don't know how the next two games could topple, but I didn't think it could top the last game. I'm not so sure we're on the way, not to at least equaling it here. Wow, what a day so far. Minute two left to go, 62 ticks left on the clock, tied at 67 in the first overtime. Walterstorf, Warner, Kachi, Seavers, and Lindbergh on the floor. Cardinal Stritch has Smith, Semenez, D'Amico, Ford, and Moore. Starting five for both teams, minus Jordan Vogel, Chris Seavers is in for him. Up top with it is Smith. Smith, right side to Semenez. Semenez guarded by the taller Lindbergh, up top to Ford. Ford, watch for his penetration. He gets into the paint. Good defense by Warner. And he misses the jumper. Seavers with the rebound. Dort College can take the lead. Well, and they could also hold for the final shot now. Here's what's going on. There is about a second difference between the game and the shot clock. So Dort College is going to hold it right now. And again, Cardinal Stretch does have a foul to give still. They've only committed five. So expect that to come if a drive to the basket starts by Dort. We're down to 15 seconds to go. Warner with a basketball up front, and Dort's going to hold for one. Ten seconds, nine, eight. Warner going. Warner still there. Warner, top of the key, defended by Ford. Tough shot off the mark. Kachi with the rebound. We're going to go to the second overtime. And unbelievable. 67-67. Warner had a look about 17 feet. It was a tough look. Ford, give him credit, defended that well. A lot of screens, a lot of fakes going on. Ford didn't have anything of it, and he defended Warner's shot there to try to win it. Double overtime, Scott. Why not? Why, why not? Well, a reminder that uh, coming up Monday at 6, or when the quarterfinals end, whatever comes first, uh, we'll have the final four coming up. Just what a great day. Already William Penn is in the final four uh, with a one-point win over Midland. On a uh, shot by James Devlin at the buzzer for the Statesman, he gives the Statesman that 67-66 win. They will take on the winner of the late game tonight between Dakota State and Grace. College of the Ozarks plays the 5 o'clock game against Indiana Southeast. 
They will match up against the winner of this game in the semifinals. And again, 8 o'clock Central Daylight Time. We jump ahead tomorrow. And then the National Championship game, which will be televised on College uh, CBS Sports Network, will be coming up on Tuesday night. And don't forget, NAI has been teaming up with New Lion to give you a lot of NAI championship streamed. And you can go to NAI.org for more information on that. And, you know, we've been doing this tournament here, the national championships, 14 years, Matt. And, again, I can't remember every game. And we've seen dozens of them over the years. But I, I can't imagine that we've already had two games that have been e that have been maybe equal to the intensity we've had in this one so far. I mean, it, it's just and you can tell that both of these teams are saving their best and they still got something in the tank. I'm not sure we do, but they do, but we'll try it, Matt. It'll be Patrick, uh, Darren Moore, jumping it up against Jordan Vogel for the third time. And the tip will be controlled by the North College defenders. Kyle Lindbergh over to Warner. 67-67, start of the second overtime. What a ball game, to say the least. What, a more, what an afternoon of basketball here at the Keter Gymnasium. Kachi with the basketball. Kachi gives it down low to Vogel. Vogel will turn and face Moore. Moore. Vogel off the glass. Can't convert in Moore with the rebound for Cardinal Stritch. And you can't ask for a better look, and he actually had the right idea. He'll take it off the glass, just missed the angle a little bit. Now Cardinal Stretch has a chance to take the lead here in the second overtime. Ford with the basketball to Moore. Moore going against Vogel. Moore using his muscle, has his shot blocked by Vogel. Blocked again by Vogel. What defense by Jordan Vogel. Moore lowered his shoulder. Vogel stood his ground. It'll be Dort College with the basketball. Man, I took a good look, and I don't see how you can argue for a foul. It looked like Vogel got two clean blocks there. And Coach Diener wasn't upset at all. I think it was just a great defensive play, two of them to be exact. Kachi down low to Lindbergh. Lindbergh posting up to Miko. Lindbergh spins over to Warner. Warner, three ball. Got it! Warner, what a time to hit your first shot. 70 to 67, under four minutes to go. And the senior gets one there. Cliff Warner knocks down the three. Yeah, it doesn't matter when you get it, it or matter how many you get, it just matters when you get it. Now Cardinal Stretch needs a big answer. Cardinal Stretch has been playing with the lead for almost all the game. There's a three and an answer for Smith. I guess that explains, answers my question. I was wondering how they were going to respond. Uh, pretty good, I would say. I would say Cardinal Stretch, no matter what happens here, proves why the number two team in the country. They have just had an answer every time Dort's got any sort of edge. But, of course, the same goes true for Dort. They've had an answer for Cardinal Stretch. Vogel to Warner. Warner, who just hit his first bucket of three. Warner over to Kachi. Kachi to Lindbergh. Lindbergh. Down little Walterstorf. Walterstorf, baseline. And a foul on Cardinal Stritch. Trevor Walterstorf will go to the free throw line for two. Could be on Moore. If it's on Moore, it's his fourth. They're going to give it to D'Amico. And that uh, is his fourth. So D'Amico picks up his fourth. Moore still with three. That's only, and the only, well, two bad things for Cardinal Stritch by calling the foul. If there's no foul, the ball hung up on the rim. It goes to them. Plus, that's their last foul to give. 16 fouls now for Cardinal Stretch. Means that uh, Dort goes to the bonus. What's amazing, we're in double overtime, and neither team's in the double bonus. That was my next point. You stole it, Scott. Dang it. Walter Storff, one more free throw coming to give his team a two-point lead, and it's off the mark. No good. Vogel tries to keep it alive, and it's tipped up by D'Amico. D'Amico will rip it down. Walter Storff with one of two free throws, 71-70 in favor of Dort College. Under three minutes to go. D'Amico with it. He's playing with four personal fouls. Over to Moore. Moore over to Ford. Ford on the right wing. Warner's giving him space. Ford will reset up top to Smith. And a player hits the deck. Right side over to Ford. Lindbergh gambles for the steal. Entry pass nearly stolen by Vogel. Just lost the handle, and it'll be Cardinal Stritch with the basketball with four seconds to shoot. Cardinal Stritch asking to reset the shot clock. I don't think Dort possessed that. I don't think it should be reset. I'm not a referee. I'm not sure on those rules, but I don't think they're going to win the argument. There's just four seconds on the shot clock. That's what's going to stay. So let's see if Cardinal Stritch tries to get something going underneath here. Four seconds on the shot clock. Dort College with a one-point lead, 71-70. They're going to have a, at least have a conversation about it here. Or, oh, no, they got a problem with one of the uh, Dort players, maybe a cut or something. And Trevor Walterstorff with a cut. 
And uh, give Coach Drew Diener credit there, a little gamesmanship. As he's, I think uh, there's a little blood uh, for Walter Storff on his head, nonetheless, and he's getting looked at by the College of the Ozarks training staff. And while he does that, uh, Drew Diener's going to take a moment to visit with his team. It's like an unofficial timeout for College of the Ozarks, or uh, for Cardinal <laughs> Stretch, sorry. Well, it's been a long uh, Well, a they're long supposed way. to be taking the court <laughs> yeah. about right now. Just hasn't quite worked out yet. So Trevor Walterstorff getting tended to by the uh, athletic training staff here on the sideline. And 71-70, uh, Dort College with the lead. Four seconds on the shot clock. So this is, in essence, a timeout for Cardinal Stritch. Now Dort College is going to go to their sideline. We're going to have to have a substitution. It'll be Nathan Rindles coming in. Rindles has seen substantial minutes, the freshman. And he has come up big. He hit a big three late in regulation. And he will come and play defense here as Walter Storff continues to get tended to on the sideline. Four seconds on the shot clock. Tony Smith to trigger in. And Stritch throws the inbounds pass on the side. Fade away three off the mark. And they, no shot gonna, clock violation. They are going to go to the replay. I think that... I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure, pretty sure that that was after the shot clock. And uh, Coach Dalma screaming to check the replay, and this is definitely a replay. Well, here's the situation. The shot went up. What, they're gonna, what, what they've are gonna, they got to ascertain, did the first shot hit the rim? Which I don't think it did. Didn't look like it did to me. Then the second thing is, did they get the follow-up before the shot clock went off? Now they're going to have a discussion about it here. Um, right now they're not checking the replay. They're, they're talking to Coach Dalma, and now they are going to jog over to the replay booth. During all of this, Trevor Walterstorff will check back in for the defenders. Again, he was getting tended to. He had a cut uh, by his eye, and so he will come back in for Rindles. Officials are going to check the replay. Again, and 